Hi, my name is Cody and I'm a full-time freelance software engineer. And first off, I'm gonna tell you one thing is that it sucked getting started. But now that I've worked with like over 20 engineering teams, freelance for close to a decade now, and I'm currently at the stage where I'm turning down work even though I'm still making more money than I ever imagined, I really wanted to make this video as kind of the advice I wish I would have had when I got started so that I could save myself so many headaches. The first thing I think is important to talk about is your experience. I would think that around like four or five years, you would have like a good amount of experience in the industry so that you can then freelance. The idea behind that is that you want to have been through the ringer for a little while and at least having like a really good solid foundation to at least one or two technologies, that's a great start. So the idea behind this is that you can jump into like legacy systems, you can build greenfield projects, you can pretty much be independent and drive most projects through just by yourself. You wanna be as very independent as possible when you freelance it so that you can get the job done and be able to execute on your work. So if you've never done any sort of freelancing at all, no moonlighting, no like weekend work, a good idea would be to search out jobs that are in agencies or consultancies, ones that are like getting those big projects. The idea behind that is that you're doing software for clients, you're getting a feel for how the project's timelines work, how to communicate with the client, the dealing with changing and pivoting requirements that happen all the time when it comes to freelancing, you get a taste for what it's like to be a freelancer. And then you're also shielded from a lot of the negatives of being a freelancer. And that's not being able to find work in time, like the consistent pay agency or consultancy was, is going to have a lot of that functionality and a lot of that work for you. And you get a good feel for whether or not you even like the work in the first place. It's an entirely different lifestyle and a different way to write code. This next piece of advice is monumental. And the idea is that the foundation foundation to any sort of freelancing career is that you need to have a really robust and strong network. Now, I know a lot of people, especially software engineers who can sometimes be introverted, is that the idea of networking gives them anxiety and they don't want to do it. You need to reframe your mind about what networking really is. Now, networking, you want to be able to just make connections. Like the people in this field, coworkers, bosses, managers are all kind of doing the same thing. We're all working in tech. We're building software. We have similar interests. So the the idea is just to make friends, to make connections, talk about work. And the idea is that you're planting seeds in your network and with people that you like and you like to work with so that sometime in the future, some work might come out of it, or at least you have a long friendship out of the deal. The idea of networking should be a very positive thing. If you're trying to network just to make a connection, just so you get something out of the end product of being connected with this person, then that's like an empty connection. No one wants to be like that friend friend or that connection that's the only one just taking. The idea is that you make a connection just like a friend and you give and take and that builds like a good rapport. So that can mature into many different ways of like more work, more connections, and more like enjoyment out of the things that you're doing for your career. This next part is super important because I did not do this and it was extremely painful. One of the most important things you do is you need to save money. The idea of having an emergency fund so that you can last three to four months without any work work is paramount. Uh, if you're trying to just run from contract to contract, you know, client to client, and you just need that next paycheck in order to live, then you're going to find yourself going down a road of doing stuff that isn't really best suited for you or clients that could be abusing you. Honestly, the idea of having an emergency fund so that you can withstand the lulls in between work and, and trust me, they will happen. That's going to give you a lot more nerves and give you a lot more confidence as you get into this world of freelancing because when when you start, when you first start freelancing, those first couple years are going to be the hardest ones. So if you have that emergency savings, if you have that cushion, then you're going to be able to operate with much more confidence and also less fear of not finding enough work at the time, because sometimes you're going to have those lulls in between contracts and that's okay. That's part of business. This next bit of advice is kind of adjacent to the idea of networking. And that is when you use your network to try to find some new work. If you just like send a message out and you say, please, give me work. I'm, I don't have work. 
find me something to do. What do you have that I could work on? No one's going to really respond very well to that. The idea and the, the more successful way to approach finding new work through your network is to take the time and actually get to know these clients and these people that you work with and you're there to solve problems. So if you understand what they're going through, what their tech is lacking or what their business is like having a hard time with, if you can solve that problem, then it is the easiest answer in the world. If you can say, I will do this so that you make more money or your business runs well. And that way it's clear to them, the client that paying you will end up making their business work better. That's how it all boils down to. If you leave your friend or your client or your potential next client to do all the work for you to find out what your skills are and how you can help them, that's gonna be a big lift because they already are like super busy. They have enough going on themselves. They don't have to babysit you to the next project. You wanna do that work for them and provide why it's gonna be a great deal to work together. This other bit of advice is kind of more uh, along the lines of another mindset set change. Now, some people think and they envision freelancing is that you've got these impressive skills. You're so good that you can just jump from person to person, you code there, you code there, you code there, and then everyone loves you and everyone gives you all this money. Now, the problem is, is that when you go off on your own or you work in the world of freelancing is that you are going to be expanding your skill sets into every different angle. You're going to probably end up doing some designing, some product management work. You're going to be setting expectations working on your communications and requirements gathering, like all this stuff that's revolved around software engineering, you're going to have to probably put your hand in there and try to help out so that you can get these projects along the way. It's not going to rely just on your freelancing. It's not going to rely just on your coding skills. That's important, but you're going to have to grow in these other areas so that you can be more and more successful from each project. And that's an exciting thing. It's, it's more stuff you can do. I mean, we're all learners here, so we might as well just like keep on growing. So you may have noticed I didn't talk at all about Upwork, TopTal, and Fiverr, and this was on purpose. I purposely don't advise people to get into freelancing by going through those marketplaces because of the relationships that are kind of built that way. It's very transactional. Usually in those marketplaces, you're racing to the bottom to be the cheapest option and you have to deliver on a tighter schedule. What I want to suggest people do to get into freelancing is building these more trustworthy, long-term, like one-on-one -on -one relationships with companies and with people so that you can continue to work with them on various projects throughout the next decade next two decades. And in my eyes, that is like the most lucrative and the most successful way to get into freelancing is having those established relationships that last a long time. And what I have seen with Upwork and TopTal and Fiverr is that it's more transactional and more short term. I want everyone to be thinking more in the long term basis. And those are those more direct relationships and clients that you want to work with for a long time. So as you can tell, this is not an exhaustive list. This is just the foundation of how you can be a free freelancer in the upcoming new year. And these are the core pieces that I wish someone taught me when I first got started because it would have saved me a lot of pain and suffering. So one of the core ideas of getting started in freelancing is finding that first client. If you go ahead and check out this video, I talk about it a little bit more and hopefully I can see you around in the next one. All right, see you guys.